Thank you. Um, having seen everyone else's slides, I want to remind you that we are representing Dublin Core, so our slides are sort of the Dublin Core of slides. Uh, they're, they're much less complex <laughs> and detailed than most of the others. You're going to come up here, John. <clears throat> so Dublin Core has been thinking about the concept of application profiles for uh, decades. And in 2008, actually developed a kind of a description language for application profiles. But this description language was, was rather complex, and uh, it, never, it never got adoption, really. So um, just this year, we, st we have decided to give this another shot to try this again, and to see if we can create a simple, very core-like, Dublin Core-like um, um, model and, and a set of templates so that people can create simple application profiles. Um, one of the th things about application profiles is that they aren't just one single thing, and people create them for a lot of different purposes. Um, they're very good for getting people together to decide what it, as a group, what they think their data is going to be. They help in data creation. Uh, they can lead into analysis and validation of data. Some people use them for mixing. A lot of people are ingesting data from a lot of different sources. Application profiles can help you bring all of these together into a single database. Um, and also, they can be used simply as views within a set of data so that you can uh, retrieve and display a view that has a particular function. One of the questions that we decided not to answer is, what is a profile? Uh, because it, no matter what we would say, we would be leaving some people out. Uh, there are profiles that are subsets of other vocabularies. There are profiles that are supersets of other vocabularies. There are profiles that are made uh, that don't have a predominant vocabulary behind them. And there are profiles that are profiles of profiles of et cetera, et cetera. And <clears throat> our approach is that uh, if you think you have a profile, you have a profile. Um, we did a requirements. Uh, uh, call a call for requirements in this group and, uh, and as is almost always the case we probably didn't gather all of the requirements because as you work you discover new ones um, but one of the things that became obvious to us early on is that many people uh, <clears throat> who are not super expert techies but are finding themselves to need to create an application profile use spreadsheets either spreadsheets or they use tables in like Word. And so we decided that we would start with a tabular format and see if we can create something that those people who are comfortable with that type of format uh, can use. It obviously would be core. It would be very simple. We are Dublin Core. Um, we're trying not to tie it into any particular technology. Uh, we want it to become uh, machine actionable, and we also want it to feed into, if possible, into validation. So this is; these are the elements that we're looking at: the template that can be used to create a profile, that can be used to create whatever you need for data input, and then also validation. So in terms of the template, uh, we looked at a number of different application profiles. This is probably going to be very familiar to you, that they tend to have the, the vocabulary terms, the constraints on those terms, some constraints on values. They may have more than one entity. They can have as little as just a list of vocabulary terms. So none of, none of this is really uh, totally mandatory that they can vary in their detail. So we got together and created a, a very simple template, which, which you know, could be uh, either a CSV file or could be used in something like Microsoft Excel. And all it does it, in, a simple, in a single row gives you the entity, the statement, and the value, any value rules you have. 
Uh, and so when you create a profile from that, this is what the profile might look like. And I, you can probably find in, in many places something that looks almost exactly like this uh, that someone is calling their application profile. Now this isn't uh, cast in stone. We're experimenting with a lot of different uh, templates, but this was one that, that we uh, began with. Um, one of the things we haven't gotten into, and I don't know to what extent we will, which is the creation of a data template. We assume that most profiles for if they're being used for the creation of data, will provide users with a template that is compatible with the profile. To what extent the profile can directly build the template, we don't know. So at the moment, we haven't really uh, looked into that. And now I'm going to turn it over to Tom to talk about some of the complexities we've run into in terms of defining values and doing validation. You know? Yes. Okay. Um, so, one thing that we found, we find in looking at actual profiles that people create in the wild is that um, different communities have different uh, ways of conceptualizing the types of values um, that are permissible um, in their data. And so here are just three examples. Um, a and B are some examples that we were playing around with, and I'll show one of those in a minute. Um, the RDA DMP, um, I was um, asked to um, uh, specify that RDA means Research Data Alliance, um, uh, not, uh, not uh, resource description uh, and access. And um, uh, and they have um, you can see that a lot of um, uh, communities circle around the same sorts of types of data, but that they um, uh, sometimes they split a data type into more specific data types. Anyway. Um, uh, we came to the conclusion that, um, uh, while it's a, actually an open question, um, uh, we don't think that it's necessarily a, um, uh, a useful exercise to try to um, come up with a standard set of um, data types. I, it, it's, it feels a little bit like a rabbit hole. Um, um, but it's good to, if we have uh, a column in this uh, spreadsheet called value type, um, it can be a controlled vocabulary. And um, people using a spreadsheet to create a profile uh, can specify the data type uh, from a pull down, uh, drop down menu in, a, in an Excel sheet. Um, and, um, and this is important also. Um, because um, if, uh, um, if there's no uniformity, if there's not um, uniformity across um, the examples that we've seen in English, um, certainly when you go outside of um, the English-speaking uh, world, you have uh, different ways of, um, of conceptualizing data. And um, these things... Um, can be used uh, in uh, in scripts that convert a spreadsheet into um, a, a validation schema, such as a Shex schema or a Shackle or, or XML schema. And so, um, we don't want to um, try to necessarily uh, standardize a um, a set of strings for um, representing different uh, data types. Um, same with um, cardinality. It's, um, there are different ways to represent cardinality. Um, uh, uh, ranges using a comma, ranges using double dots, um, or uh, a way that is more familiar to um, many librarians, which is to um, say uh, uh, simply whether something is mandatory um, and or repeatable. So, um, here's an example. Um, for, 
from a Wikidata uh, entity uh, schema as a um, so I should s say that since May, um, uh, Wikidata has uh, a, a new namespace for uh, for schemas, and these schemas can be used to validate or check um, uh, items uh, of um, on Wikidata. And uh, there's a, a Wikidata schemas project. Um, and uh, and mm, so this is in the E namespace. This is E130. Uh, it is a schema that somebody wrote to uh, describe the, um, the shape of, um, of a description of an item in Wikidata that is a painting. Uh, and and so um, the challenge is that and and this is essentially as we see it it's a it is a representation or it is an uh, of an application profile it is a machine actionable representation of an app application profile not the only possible one but it is certainly one of the um, possibilities and so. Um, so uh, here is a spreadsheet which uh, basically records the same information as the uh, the existing um, uh, Wikidata schema, uh, and uh, because the problem has been that to um, uh, that that uh, creating a schema uh, in Shex. Um, shape expressions language. I don't know if if um, if I need to say what that is. Um, it is a, um, a a new language uh, for uh, describing the content um, of data, and it has a uh, this syntax. Let me go back one slide. Um, it has this syntax here, um, which um, is is not that difficult, but it, it's difficult if you just want to write a schema and you don't want to spend um, a day learning about uh, Shex syntax. Um, and so the idea is that to, in order to help people um, um, create a, a schema like that, uh, one could picture putting it into uh, a tabular format like this. And uh, so um, here we have entity name, entity label, property, property label, cardinality, um, and then this value type um, field, which is a controlled vocabulary of whatever um, a particular community considers to be the salient, uh, salient value types. Um, and here is another way, actually, it's because we're playing around we we've we had a hackathon um, uh, table uh, at the Dublin Core Conference in Seoul in September, uh, where we um, brainstormed about this for um, for a day, and uh, we sort of narrowed it, narrowed down the uh, the uh, the the fields or the components of a um, tabular spreadsheet, uh, and we're sort of. We're playing right now with different variants. Here is a variant that uses mandatory and repeatable instead of um, cardinality, for example. Okay, so um, I wrote a um, uh, Python script. Uh, you can see lines 47 through 50 of the Python script up at the top there. Um, if you want to see the whole script, uh, it's um, in a uh, GitHub repository that. Um, Karen will um, uh, that we have the will provide a link for later, um, and uh, and the script basically um, it, it's not a terribly um, well. I'm sure the script could be better, um, which is maybe why I didn't show the lines uh, one through forty six. Um, but um, uh, but it did it did produce a uh, schema. Which, when I converted it into ShexJ, was byte for byte identical with, with um, the original schema in uh, Wikidata, uh, which is this. So you can 
you can see that they're um, um, that they're um, identical, pretty close in Shex C, and then when you convert it into the JSON syntax, it's completely identical. Um, so anyway, um, there are lots of questions. Um, uh, five minutes. Perf is that? Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, how simple is too simple? Uh, uh, we would love to have more uh, input on this. Uh, whether the, um, uh, the 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 small model that we're working with is um, uh, is good enough, uh, and for what use cases. Uh, but I but I I think that we want to avoid. Uh, making a spreadsheet template which itself becomes too complex that one has to learn about um, in order to use. Um, so it, shouldn't, it should be fairly obvious and fairly usable. Um, do we want to try to standardize value types? That's a question I asked before. And um, should we have some discussion about what parts of a profile need to be citably identified in order to be reused within a profile. And I don't think we can cover that in a minute or two. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. But it's definitely okay. one of the questions. OK, yeah, I, I can. Oops, did I skip over one? Uh, no, there we there. go. Yeah. So is this working? I'll take that one. For some reason, we can't get that one to do it. Um, so we have some general conclusions already, uh, although we probably have more questions than conclusions. But um, we know that it's going to be very hard to come up with some kind of universal profile template that's going to work for everybody. So we clearly are going to need something that is uh, extensible. Um, a simple template does seem to be plausible. We don't know how many use cases it's going to cover. But complex, it, it, it like any other problem that you have, going from simple to complex, it gets really complex really quickly. And we know that for many people's uses, that the, the more complex is going to require training. You're going to have to have users who are, you know, well involved in what the what you know what the structure looks like. And again, we're trying to be double in core. We're trying to solve the simplest case and then let people who have the skills to expand that to something more complex let them do it. Um, at the, we have just started thinking about that uh, we, it would be great to write a document that explains the basic guidelines for simple profiles that would help guide people who are coming into profiles perhaps for the first time, give them ideas, uh, give them sort of guidance so that they know uh, what, they, um, what it's all about. Because I think that people think, oh, I'm going to create a profile, but they don't really understand what the profile is supposed to be. We, uh, our links are that we have a, the interest group, which you're welcome to join. It has a mailing list. If you go on to the second link here, down at the bottom, you'll see a link as to how to subscribe to that, uh, to that group. Um, and we are, have just, and we're, we're still working on, this is something Tom and I are going to do <laughs> this evening and, to, and yeah. tomorrow morning, which is we have this, um, this folder for prototypes. We have some prototypes in there. We're going to set up a little uh, um, intro file ask t saying that if you would like to uh, submit a prototype to us, you know, here are the kinds of files that we'd like to see, give you a little bit of, of, of a template. And st we would love to gather anything that you have, any uh, experience you have, prototypes, things that you uh, have developed or started to develop in here, because the more of that that we gather, um, the further along we're going to be able to get. And I think that that leads us to the questions part. Yay! Thank you very much. Uh, yes, so questions, comments. How does that, is that working now? Marsha. Mm. Oh. Hi. I was uh, 
thinking and suggesting to Tom, uh, instead of making all the template, maybe uh, just like IIIF have done, develop some kind of API or rules that everyone agree or can use. And for example, the presentation API, what situation, what should be there, what should be named? Instead of you develop everything, you provide the general uh, agreement kind of API. Yeah. To, to, to just TripIF has different APIs for uh, right. different think, purposes. Yeah, different I, purposes. I, I mean, I think that we need to to create that kind of a background document, but we our audience is, we are looking at a much less technical audience than IIIF. So we are really looking at providing the tools to people who could not create the tools themselves. So I, I think it's a different audience. It's a different use case. Not that, not that that information wouldn't be useful, but I think that we do want to go on and, and make it yeah, I mean, we're really trying to address the use case, for example, of somebody who um, knows what, you know, what properties they use for metadata and they should be able to put it into a spreadsheet and have it be turned into a validation schema uh, without having to learn um, a language like Shex. Okay, other comments? I, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, since, um, can, um, if if a colleague of mine was assigned a task to of creating the, a metadata profile for, let's say, an, a repository system, particular repository system, as guidance for the users of the, that repository, why would they care about your spreadsheet templates? And uh, what, what's your selling point? Because I think it could be seen as that this. This is only making a document for the users of that repository, and why would they need anything you provide? Yeah, uh, well, as, as I see it, um, a spreadsheet is sort of an on-ramp to um, a something that is more machine actionable than uh, a spreadsheet. Really, just shows you it's a it's a way. It's a way that uh, it's 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 an idiom that a lot of people are very familiar with, and so um, people can approach a spreadsheet and fill in the blanks. And but um, I d don't see this as a replacement for um, more um, expressive representations of the same content, like a check schema, for example, or um, some other schema. And so um, I really. S personally see it as something that helps people um, author things without um, that that can be used for validation or for um, for other um, things that you one uses a profile for um, but without uh, learning uh, an advanced uh, more advanced language thank you anyone else want to ask a question yes. Uh, how do you, do you handle a situation where uh, the value should come from a fixed uh, terminology, so A, B, or C? Uh, yeah, and and is there a way to add additional uh, evaluations like regular expression uh, matching? Well, I, I, the, so one of the data types that um, that we find um, is the like pick list or something like that, um, and a set of strings that the value should be one of these or should be a controlled one of a controlled set of strings, and to me that's just another um, uh, value type, as it were, and um, the the script um, that one would write to to convert the spreadsheet into something else would know what to do with that value type. Um, and certainly in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet, you can create a, a second sheet within the, or a second tab within the sheet, and the tab will, um, can, can hold that controlled vocabulary so you can make it into a drop-down 
And did you want to? No. So. Okay. Thank you very much. We thank the speakers again in this session.